ESPN, celebrating 150 years of college football. I always believe that college football rivalries are the most intense, arguably in the world. It's not just my team's better than your team, it's our culture is better than your culture. Our state is better than your state. It's us versus you. The two points that completed the Crimson Comeback Miracle. That game, here in this city, could be for nothing. It's still for everything. We expect to win. We expect to win championships. We definitely expect to beat our arch tribe. Werfel lets it go again, right on the number. Lazy stop! Lazy stop! That is Charles again. They're going to go with the same play, same block, same result. Your rival is the enemy. Your rival is everything that's wrong with college football, and you're everything that's right. It's up. Yes, to the right. To the 40, to the 35, to the 20, to the 10. He's all the way home. The greatest. Guys, I want to thank all of you for coming here on the anniversary of college football. 150 years, we're celebrating the game that means so much to all of us. I can't think of another sport that encourages as much civil and sometimes not so civil discussion and debate and discourse <laughs> as college football. I'm hoping most of this will be civil, but if you want to get uncivil every now and then, that might make it fun. So I want you guys to think of us as a jury. And since there are 11 of us, let's come up with top 11 and a number of categories. It's always important to win these rivalry games, but it seems like if you're in the same general proximity or region, it carries a little extra meaning. Sometimes it might have conference implications, sometimes maybe just bragging rights, sometimes national implications. But when we talk about rivalries, let's start a little bit deeper and talk about the greatest individual rivalry games of all time. We're in the Los Angeles area, and here is the Memorial Coliseum. 1967, UCLA, USC really had it all. Uh, UCLA was undefeated, ranked number one. SC was fourth with one loss. Both teams had legitimate Heisman Trophy contenders. UCLA had Gary Beeman, a quarterback. Of course, O.J. Simpson, great running back for USC. Both teams were in the national title race. Both teams were in the Rose Bowl race. It was one of the games that made me really start watching college football. Simpson. There's his brilliance. The USC-UCLA game in 67 was a fantastic 60-minute performance. There's not all. Touchdown, UCLA! But as a college football fan and historian, all I'm conditioned to think of when I think of that game is O.J. Simpson's 64-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter. First down and more. There's Simpson. Look at that touch. O.J. Simpson, 64 yards. It was such a special game, and then my team won, so I was cool. Florida's most explosive team converged to settle a score. Number three, Miami, battles number four, Florida State. One of the very first great Miami-Florida State games was that 87 game. Both teams were ranked in the top four, and Florida State really was just on its ascendancy. And Miami, 86, lost to Penn State. And here they are again, undefeated, with a national title potentially on the line. Over the middle to Irvin, he's got it for a touchdown. Michael Irvin would go on to a great NFL career. Deion Sanders on the other side. A sweet grab. Deion Sanders, the All-American corner, was there to hold him down. And of course, two legendary coaches in Jimmy Johnson and Bobby Bowden. Inside of a minute now, McManus going for it all. Touchdown! 42 seconds left, and Bobby Bowden decides we're going to go for two because he was convinced by his players on the sideline, we want to win this game. And here they come, the two-point conversion after the touchdown. No good. Miami leads it 26-25 with 42 seconds to go. The only game Florida State lost was to Miami. And you could argue that Bobby Bowden could easily have two or three more national championships had one play gone a different way against the Hurricanes. 
Years later, Bobby Bowden said one of the biggest regrets of his coaching career was not kicking the extra point, because if they had kicked the extra point, they probably would have won the national championship that year. Miami was that nemesis for him for so long. 2016, Ohio State, Michigan, one of, if not the best rivalry in all of college football, and in this case, the stakes could not have been any higher. Looks in the flat and delivers it in a touchdown. Harbaugh is number three in the country. Urban Meyer won a national title, of course, is number two. It's all on the line. Big Ten title, a spot probably in the playoffs, and it was another fantastic back and forth game. Weber dives for an Ohio State touchdown. It seemed like Michigan was the better team, but they just kept shooting themselves in the foot. The time now delivers downfield, incomplete, and here comes the flag. And then at the end, Ohio State starts chipping back, and sure enough, they tie it right before overtime. Knocks it through. And comes down to a double overtime and a spotted ball. Hit! Right at the marker! The spot will decide it! After review, the play stands as called on the field, first down. Still 15 yards away from the goal line. Samuel cuts it back. Ohio State wins! Who among you, even the most optimistic Auburn fans, who among you could have foreseen a time when Auburn would be expected to beat a Georgia team today here in Week 12 in Jordan-Hare Stadium, a talented team that's gotten them the last couple of years? Georgia was pretty good. They're in the top 25, barely. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Auburn is a team that suddenly is trying to become a national championship contender, but honestly, in the press box, a lot of us aren't buying into that. Fourth and 18, deep in your own territory. You got about a half a minute left in the game. The only way they're going to win this game is with the miracle. Three-man rush. Let's it go. And that is exactly what they got. Thanksgiving Day, 1971. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, unbeaten in 29 games, ranked number one in the nation against the second-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. The 1971 Nebraska-Oklahoma game, that game was massive. Both undefeated, both of them competing for a national championship. There, Rogers takes the ball at the 30. He's hit and got away. Back up field at the 35 to the 40. He's to the 45. He's to the 50 to the 45. To the 40 to the 35. To the 20 to the 10. He's all the way home. The Johnny Rogers return has gotten so big over time that I think if you ask a lot of people, they'll tell you it was a game-winning play. It happened in the first quarter. We played a good game offensively. Milton had 300 yards rushing and throwing. And busting one out here to a man who's open. It's a touchdown, Oklahoma lead. We weren't a great defensive team then, as we were the next several years. Not to be denied, Jeff Kenney, his third touchdown of the afternoon. None of the games matched Oklahoma-Nebraska 1971. The season has come down to one snap for both of these teams. So here it is, fourth down and 14. Mildren looking. Mildren, the ball knocked down by Rich Glover, number 79. And the Nebraska players are happy and well they should be. Nebraska won the national championship that year. And while people might have forgotten a little bit about it because the rivalry has ended, that game, legendary. We have a game of the century every year, it seems now. But the original one that I remember was the Nebraska-Oklahoma game in 1971, which had national championship If Johnny Rogers had that kind of a performance today, yeah. we'd be talking about that. It's clearly the game of the century because of that performance he did. Every kind of way you could score, he scored. But I think what stands out about this topic is that it's all very regional, and so there it's very personal. It's literally where you grew up. I agree with you, and, and coming up, you heard about the Iron Bowl. I didn't know the hate and disdain between Georgia and Auburn, though. Also, you're dealing with the prayer in Jordan Hare because that's that's a game that when you watch it back, it's unbelievable. We talk about the kick six, and that's better the game, game that follows. It's a better game because yeah. 
Georgia was down. They had to come back. I think Aaron Murray Aaron had to Murray throw like great. three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. And then we're down to like 25 yeah. seconds less in your mind. Georgia's got the win. Here, they're throwing I up remember. a prayer. Nick Marshall throws up a prayer. Mm -hmm. DB, what does he do? He didn't knock he it didn't down. Knock it down. Yeah. He didn't knock, knock it down. Well, I don't know if I should say I actually like that more. I like it now when we all kind of like each other. I'm not I sure. kind of like it when we don't like Me each too. other. <laughs> Michigan and Ohio race. State don't, they, like, they each don't other. like each other. Uh, up until now, in that 2016 game where Harbaugh still disputes about the measurement, whether the uh, Buckeyes should have gotten the first down. Still don't know how Michigan didn't win that game in 2016. There wasn't a second in that game that I thought Ohio State was the better team. You go back to rivalry in the state of Florida between Miami and Florida State. I mean, that 87 game gets overlooked just because of what happened in 90 and 91 and 2000. It's all the, the wide rights and the missed field goal. To that point, one reason is it happened in October. It didn't define the seasons that, you know, that game got pushed back to November, then it's played at the beginning of the year. They moved it all around, but the, I, I remember that game. It was spectacular. There are a lot of different kinds of rivalry games. Some of them are, are rooted in respect and tradition, and some have significance to a particular happening outside of sports. What about some non-conference games, some big intersectional type matchups that resonate and could make our list as among the 11 greatest? Second down and 10 while they check on Patton. It is back to the ground game. And all the way, Reggie Bush with a dive. 2005 USC, multiple Heisman Trophy winners, you know, Matt Leiner, Reggie Bush, Pete Carroll's got him rolling. USC was playing professional football and everybody else was playing college. There's not a cloud in the sky, but there is electricity in the air in Notre Dame Stadium, overflowing for the 77th renewal of one of college football's top games. Notre Dame have not been big nationally for a while. Charlie Weiss is there, the offense is opening up, and now it's a top 10 team with a chance to perhaps play for the first national championship in a couple of decades. It was a great game that came down to the very end. Leonard on fourth down, in the pocket, goes down the sideline. It's caught. Jarrett just stopped. And you get, of course, the famous Bush push. Liner going to try to sneak it ahead. He got it. Touchdown, SC. Which, by rule, is not allowed. Uh, but it was allowed on that particular play and, uh, you know, changed history. 1963, the star-spangled spectacle of collegiate football is renewed for the 64th time. Big gun for the sailors is Roger Staubach, the sensational All-American quarterback. The 1963 Army-Navy game was really an emotional time for our country, and it was an emotional time for the Naval Academy at West Point, and, and it was an emotional time for the football team. Here we lost the President of the United States. Our Commander-in-Chief is assassinated. And then all of a sudden, that game became bigger because it was played on behalf of the Candy family. Master scrambler, Roger throws back to the weak side, and this play goes all the way as Kellner sprints into the end zone. The stakes of the game, uh, with Navy being ranked in the top two in the country, and Roger Staubach winning the Heisman Trophy, the winner was going to go on and play Texas in the Cotton Bowl. And it was also the first game to utilize his replay. So they got down to the... Uh, one or two yard line and uh, they ran out of timeouts. They didn't get that last playoff. So we won 21 to 15. I still emotionally caught up in one of the most emotional games I've ever played. And we almost lost to a really good Army team. I personally think anything with the service academies is w is the most important because it, it means so much more than just football. I think those have something special that no other college football game has. Well, that, that 63 game, you know, y you're drawn back to the question, should they have played it? I think at that time, that's what America needed. I mean, I think the country was lost. There was 30 days of mourning. JFK was a Navy vet. And they delayed it for a week. Right? And it might have been Jackie Kennedy, but I think all of them wanted this game to be played. It was a great game. I mean, we have to point out it was a great game. Controversial ending. Yeah, too. Navy was with number two in the country, I think, and it only lost to Texas. And uh, Army got to the goal line at the end of the game and couldn't push it over. Another intersectional game that we should consider here, the Bush-Push game between uh, the Fighting Irish and the Trojans in 2005. It's almost a shame that you had a little bit of controversy in the end because that fourth down throw that Liner made to Dwayne Jarrett was unbelievable. It was a dramatic finish. No question. When it comes to these great rivalry games, sometimes it's not 
the entire game that defines it is rather a moment within the game. The number one Seminoles against the number two Hurricanes. The buildup has been so flavorful that you almost hate to let it go. I feel like for a five-year period, those games were all the same. Larry Jones. Some big plays, big hits. He's got a touchdown. And Miami leads 17 to 16. And then the game came down to a field goal. And this is for a win. It's up. One point. It's always one damn point. And it's always Miami. The Big Ten has lost a legend and icon. Ohio State has lost an alumnus and friend. Bo made the game of football better in every way. Michigan, Ohio State, 2006. Not only do those two teams not like one another and they're fighting for the same conference title every year, now you're one and two in the country as well. Coming off one of the greatest, most legendary coaches of all time's death. I can't imagine the emotion of that game. Bo Schembechler was, was such a wonderful character. And I think how unlike Bo and Woody this game is today. Up and down the field, high scoring. But you know, those two rascals are up there somewhere looking down on this and having a great afternoon. Michigan Ohio State games are normally 14 to 10, and this game was wild. Great plays, high scoring, the highest scoring game to that point, ended 42 39. And despite all that, it will always be remembered as the game that was played the day after Bo died. Ohio State will play for a national championship. Mark Harmon, 35 yard kick will win it. Well, you have these two schools that are close to each other. It is a rivalry. It's a regional rivalry. And why it would be on a list is because of that ridiculously crazy finish. Beautiful kick. Stanford sideline erupts in celebration. They're ahead 20 to 19. There are four seconds left on the clock. Stanford kicks off, and Cal begins its rugby play, something they had practiced. Rogers along the sideline. Another one. They're still in deep trouble at midfield. Pandemonium ensued. Nobody knew what happened. Nobody signaled a touchdown. And then finally, the lead official, the referee, signals touchdown. And I said, I think we just won the game. California <laughs> won the big game over Stanford. Michael, two weeks ago, Auburn had an incredible play. Fourth and 18 against Georgia. Their title hope seemed non existent. Yes. A tip into a touchdown and an incredible comeback to beat Georgia. That was. The biggest play of the season for the Tigers. Exactly. Until, until, until just moments ago. In Iron Bowl lore, this is one of the best first minute to last minute games in the history of this rivalry. People forget this now because of the finish. Alabama lining up for a field goal they're probably not going to make. And then we're all going to get on with the rest of our lives and move to overtime, whatever. Everyone in the building knew the field goal was not going to happen. I mean, it's just not. And one guy in the building, Gus Malzahn, was like, you know what, I think we probably should have someone there. It's an awful long field goal. We probably should have one there just in case, just have somebody down by the end zone. And none of us saw him until everybody saw him. 56 yarder. It's got, no, does not have the leg. And Chris Davis takes it in the back of the end zone. He'll run it out to the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45. There goes Davis. Oh, my God. Davis is going to run it all the way back. Auburn's going to win the football game. He ran the missed field goal back. Auburn wins. My goodness. I think kick six is the most memorable to me. It was the most improbable finish to a rivalry game. So to me, that will live forever because of the unusual circumstances for the kick That six. game, that play stands out so much because of the, the impact it had nationally and, you know, in a great big rivalry game. And uh, in my view, it kind of trumps the, the play of 1982 Stanford Cal, the five lateral play and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> although I, 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 do, I, do, <laughs> I do wonder if, if that isn't the single most, I don't know, well-known play out there, 
why is it out there every year and I have to relive that nightmare every year? <laughs> I would make the argument that until the kick six, that was the most iconic, memorable play in rivalry history in college football history. Because of the band. The band. The band made it. I mean, the band is on the field. The you know? band made it. That's how you know a moment is iconic is when decades later, right. they're still stopping you in the street yeah. on both sides of the rivalry to say that was unbelievable. And, and the trombone players signing autographs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about the myriad wide rights and left from the Florida State Miami series? Wide right one is. Funny thing about that one is. If that kick had taken place in 1990, it would have been good. That was the first year that the goalposts were narrowed down to the professional width. And Jerry Thomas's kick is probably good, and Florida State probably wins the national championship in 1991 if mm. goalposts yeah. didn't change. What about the 2006 Michigan-Ohio State game, a game between two national title contenders, and it came the day after Bo Shem Beckler had died? Bo had been at the press conference Monday in Ann Arbor, because I was there, and, and talked to him. And, you know, he looked like he talked to the team on Thursday, yeah. the day before he died. Yeah. It was just one added layer of drama uh, to a game that really didn't need much more, but just Bo and his overwhelming shadow and his influence in that rivalry, and it, it definitely added a lot. I think rivalry is definitely the fuel of college football. Professional sports have their rivalries, but none of them are on par with the passion and the bitterness of rivalries in college football. Sometimes you get a rivalry game and 364 days can go into that. Months of thinking about it, prepping for it, planning for it, anticipation, all kind of coming to a head and building towards kickoff. The votes are in. These are the top 11 rivalry games from the first 150 years of college football. Zone. Got it. Touchdown. That's all she wrote. 64 yards. Irvin's gone. Touchdown, Miami. A master scrambler. Rogers throws back to the weak side to Gary Kellner. Ohio State wins. It's up. Yes, to the right. Can I just say, by the way, I'm so relieved that Rob brought that Cal Stanford game up because I sat down next to him this morning and I thought, I'm going to have to bring up this game. <laughs> and and we, we don't know each down. other that well. He might punch me in the face. It, it, his knee was down. His knee was down. It, that's, that part is clear. Never should have happened. Dwight Garner, knee down. Instant replay. Why didn't we have it back then? <laughs> but as the film shows, that started your career as a lawyer because you were, uh, you were arguing your case Politics. at the yeah. time with the officials afterwards, were you not? 